Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tom Gill. And just a procedural thing before we start, I'll be revealing the topic of my speech a little bit later, so stay tuned. I hold before you the most wanted man in the world. He's been called a traitor, a coward, someone who should be hanged, an enemy of the United States. Now when I say the phrase, enemy of the United States, I want you to think for a moment, please think of who comes to mind. Perhaps some of you are thinking of the 9-11 terrorist attackers. I remember I was in fourth grade at the time, seeing planes flying into buildings, people jumping to their death. And we knew that on the other side were our enemies who were seeking to destroy American values. But the man I have before you is nothing like that. Rather than try to destroy our values, he defended liberty and freedom and promoted democracy. The exact same values our founding fathers put into place in 1776. But who is this man, and what did he do? Ladies and gentlemen, the man I've been talking about goes by the name of Edward Snowden. I'll buy a quick show of hands from the audience just to confirm who knows who Edward Snowden is, judges included. So, good. So, we'll only spend a few moments talking about Snowden. Then we'll get into what the definition of an enemy is. And then we'll talk about Snowden as somebody who defended liberty and freedom and fought for democracy is not an enemy of our country. Edward Snowden worked as a computer specialist for the NSA in charge of keeping Americans safe. But during his time there, he noticed something was wrong. Sure, we were spying on our enemies abroad, but also spying on you and me, the American people. Snowden knew this was unconstitutional, so he went up the chain to talk to his superiors. But one after the next, he was told to sit down and stop asking questions. And so on May the 20th of 2013, he did the only thing he knew he could which was to arm you and me, the American public, with this information. Immediately, he was branded as an enemy by some in government. But the US code itself defines an enemy for us. Someone who's engaged in hostilities with our country. Snowden, on the other hand, was looking to promote liberty and freedom. The freedom not to have your and my phone records collected our GPS tracked, our web browsing captured. Now, is there anyone in the audience who doesn't care at all about their privacy, their personal information? Be brave. No one. And freedom. The freedom not to be lied to by the government. See, a few weeks prior to the leaks, James Clapper, our director of intelligence, had gotten up and sworn they were not conducting surveillance on America. Snowden's not the only one who thought this to be unconstitutional. We have a conservative New Hampshire senator, a federal judge, agreeing. Whereas an enemy would seek to destroy liberty and freedom, Snowden defended it. Even Daniel Ellsberg, a man who was once in Snowden's shoes and viewed as an enemy, said that Snowden has done more for our Constitution than anyone he knows. Armed with this information, the public was outraged. They didn't like being spied on. No one raised their hand to the privacy question before. So finally, Congress started getting involved. We not only had just the government making their case for security, but also now privacy going back and forth. That is American democracy. It's exactly what our founding fathers envisioned we would do in a time of difficult decisions. An enemy would seek to destroy American democracy. Snowden defended it. Even President Obama himself has said that this debate we're having as a result of Snowden will make our country stronger. 
Now, while Obama certainly doesn't believe him to be an enemy, there are those that do, so I want to address two points very quickly. The first is that he revealed too much information. But Snowden, the, when he released it to the Washington Post, they went through with the government to make sure we weren't releasing military secrets or anything to jeopardize national security. Not a precaution an enemy would take. And to the second point that he was a foreign spy, remember this. He didn't release this information to Al-Qaeda. He released it to the Washington Post. Snowden committed this act of public service for no gain of his own. Think about this. He left a six-figure salary, $200,000, more money than I'm even close to making right now, and his girlfriend in comfortable living in Hawaii to do this for us. He's now a fugitive in Russia. This is exactly what our founding fathers would have envisioned him to do in a time of government overreach. Speaking of our founding fathers, before we were even a country, 1776, they were getting sick of the British overreach. Now these men, these American patriots, put the pen to paper and wrote up liberty, democracy, and freedom, the same value Snowden would defend 250 years later. But these men, the George Washingtons, the Ben Franklins, the Thomas Jeffersons, Given they were British citizens at the time, don't you think these men would have been viewed as enemies of the state, too? Thank you very much.